first of all, thank you for inviting me here, and uh, thank you all of you like for coming to listen to me. Uh, not only to me, obviously, but still like for this talk as well. Um, yeah, so um, the title of my uh, talk today is like helping data teams with Puppet. Um, during the keynote today, you already heard that uh, we have this kind of uh, interesting time when everything like is involving like from just a simple focusing to something that when you need to cover like way too many things like in the same time. And uh, basically, it's uh, what I'm gonna explain or present here like in my talk. Um, it's how we. Like, personally, I am a data scientist, and um, from this talk I will say how Puppet can be helpful for your data people, your business intelligence people, and everything else who is uh, trying to help you with data. So speaking of agenda, for today uh, we're gonna have like a couple of uh, like big sessions. Uh, first of all, like why and uh, what exactly we have in common with Puppet, and uh, why I'm here to tell you something, what kind of experience and uh, everything else. Uh, after we will go um, more into details with business intelligence and even more uh, into something that uh, Windows can help you. Uh, most of you will say like Windows, oh, something is wrong here, but I mean some of tools are not so open and uh, um, let's say uh, Tableau for uh, data uh, reporting and uh, Data visualization is not so open in terms of server, and sometimes you need also have this like small, uh, not very fancy Windows guy. Maybe he will help you as well. Um, after I will uh, go to some smaller tips how to um, make you Puppet code more beautiful because sometimes you can get it like minimum viable code and it works. It's pretty fine, but um, it's better to have it like slightly in a better shape. And also, I will go like even more into details to talk about ranking and some more advanced things, but also based on Puppet. So everything about Puppet, 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 Puppet. <laughs> so um, once more about me and a colleague of mine. Um, my last name is Homenko. Um, I'm originally from Ukraine, but uh, living and working in Germany already for, I don't know, three years or so. Uh, I am data scientist. Data scientist of what? Uh, the biggest fashion community, basically. Um, so it's big e-commerce, but at the end of the day, it's also fashion community. Um, I also like data analysis, like for different kind of things. Like sometimes I even do some quantifiable selves and everything around. So uh, pretty much data. Uh, I was speaking in uh, Berlin buzzwords, Apache Con, and some different things. Doesn't matter. Uh, like. A colleague of mine is also was helping me with some uh, minor uh, puppet things. He's uh, like DevOps, how you call it uh, right now, and uh, he likes microservices, Docker, and everything fancy like to factor applications and continuous integration, everything else. Um, so one more, I will have like a couple of slides just to explain you um, what kind of environment we have and maybe what kind of uh, requirements we have uh, based on these uh, uh, environments. Uh, so basically, first one is uh, Stylite. As you can see, we are uh, multi-platform, so you can uh, use our application on mobile, you can use our application uh, on a web. Um, I think we even have something like for wearables, like so you can do it like from your watch or so, but it's not in production anymore because people do not use it much and you need to maintain this code base. Um, if you will simplify those things, it's uh, like a couple of uh, points of the product. Like first one is like a big uh, uh, e-commerce, uh, I don't know, uh, search engine basically. So we aggregate information from different shops, like more than 100 of them. And for you it's like a single entry point. You don't need to go like to Asos, Zalando, whatever, you name it. Uh, just like one thing and we do like all product processing for you like automatically. So we are trying to be like the most relevant, the most helpful for you. But enough about product. Like speaking of scale, it's like 12 countries that you can understand. Like, um, is it something that's gonna help you, or it's just like some random things that you can just uh, um, work like for very small things? Now it could help for bigger things. Um, so the first part of our schedule, it's actually about business intelligence. Um, is there like anybody from room who has something to do with business intelligence or data teams? Ooh. One, two, mm, maybe some people around that I can see from here. <laughs> so basically, um, this part is going to be um, about Windows and about business intelligence. As uh, today already mentioned, uh, Puppet is moving to direction of uh, other platforms already there actually. But when I first time asked like our um, DevOps guys like 
guys, I have like a Windows machine and I need to provision it like automatically. They were like, mm -hmm. can you move it like to Linux? I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was like a very short discussion about like using Puppet. Uh, but I actually tried like on my own and it was like, okay, seems like it's working at least for some smaller things. Um, maybe I need to spend more time and get something uh, more valuable for me and actually something that will bring me value some. So um, we're going to talk about some minimum valuable BI. Um, obviously, we're not going to cover something that's like out of the scope of Puppet or something that we didn't use Puppet for, like I don't know, uh, managing your like big Hadoop clusters, like and all like big big data and everything else. So this uh, example is like something that can be hosted like on this small, not very fancy Windows guy. Um, the main reason that we use it this was this uh, Tableau guy because uh, it didn't. Oops. Sorry, most likely I quit it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, do not click anymore. Um, <laughs> I did it. <laughs> do not touch anymore. Um, yeah, so uh, Tableau is a big uh, uh, data reporting tool that you can use, but unfortunately, some of parts of it are not. Uh, uh, supported by Linux, so you can just like move it away, and you can use it like from this side. From another side, we also had like some small, uh, smaller automation tools, like written in Python, and also some open data solutions written in TellMD. And we wanted to, as you already have this Windows guy, and he's anyway like lying somewhere around. Um, maybe you should use it like also for something. Uh, so first of all, uh, we already used Puppet for some bigger, bigger tools, and we already had like a big setup of machines like that we used. Uh, and we initially were trying to use like the same Puppet Master because like it's like cross-platform, so it should be just setting up some, some different rules, and it should work for you. Um, honestly, the DevOps guys were like, hmm, "You better do not put your Windows like on my Unix machine." I was like, "What?" <laughs> so uh, we were trying to find some solution for that. And turns out there's like a very simple solution actually. Um, why it's simple? Because you don't need to build anything on top, and it sometimes it's even simpler than uh, use this uh, uh, Puppet masters with everything else. So the name of the solution is uh, standalone mod for Puppet. Uh, how does it work? Like usually, um, oversimplifying the process, you have um, your Puppet master and like lots of nodes uh, trying to get something, right? Uh, they obviously have some packs like and all kind of features like on their side, but at the end of the day they're asking like this big guy like, can you bring me something? Like, is there something new for me? And it works like that. But the problem here, if you just like starting with a new platform, you don't know like what exactly you need. You cannot like repeat yourself. Um, for me, it was like quite complicated because I need to deploy it like to Puppet Master. After uh, I need to wait that this guy will get it like inside. After I'll run it like on my Windows machine, and it will say like, doesn't work. And this like cycle was like quite long for me. So um, it was like very time consuming, and it was not very nice. And especially like if you uh, if your Puppet Master is living like in a master uh, Puppet Master in a master in a master branch. <laughs> um, and you always like pushing those things like and those people they are fine with that more or less all the time but at the end of the day if you will check the commit history of this day like what's happening there and it turns out that somebody was trying some new things like or trying to develop something so it's not very friendly uh, from another side if you have like a small configuration in your uh, standalone application that can be executed like from puppet it's quite nice um, Feedback cycle is getting like even shorter because it's just like a local environment. You don't need like any kind of network. You don't need to um, compile like all the world like on the Puppet Master to get like all configurations. It's like totally fine for you. And um, I was also happy for our DevOps guys that our um, Windows machines were like totally separate from Unix ones. So like you can do whatever you want there. It's like totally fine. <coughs> Um, but you would say, um, yeah, and they have it like on my local machine, but it's not like reliable at all. I mean, it's just some random file, and you need to log in like where are the, um, I'm on the stop like to this machine and get it like running. No problem. You can post it like also on GitHub. Um, so we developed like this simple um, 
maybe slightly hacky, but for our case of like small Windows machines, like totally enough. Um, it's a small uh, script, and what does it do? Like, as an idea that you have this um, BI configuration somewhere hosted, like on GitHub, and also there is like another folder with this Puppet configuration inside. And what that guy does, he's just trying to pull it like every 15 minutes or whatever you name it, and after he's applying it like automatically on this like local machine. So if you will check it. Um, if you will uh, not think about all this like reliability, uh, all your I don't know um, uh, puppet master and everything else, and then of the day it's also like checking like frequently, checking what you do. If you push something like uh, in or match something into your master branch, it's also going to be there. So fine for me. Um, reliability was also kind of question, so we wanted okay, let's make it slightly better. So. Um, how many of people here have some uh, support of Windows or like lots of Windows that they need to manage? Um, there are some people, yes. So you most likely uh, know that uh, Windows also has some uh, uh, kind of event uh, management system and you can try to create those events. Uh, so what we did, um, it's again, you can see on the screen basically. Uh, so you are checking if uh, everything was fine. If not fine, go to error handler. And error handler is actually creating this event. Um, so basically, if even something is uh, totally broken, let's say uh, somebody was uh, trying to do some uh, cowboy coding and just go to this machine and like change something there, you will get notification like automatically. Um, not like fully automatically for this step, but it's still going to be event in uh, those logs. Um, what we did with those logs, we uh, used, uh, I think it was Logly, yeah. For our case, we used Logly, and this Logly agent is like automatically transforming all events from Windows machine uh, into some centralized uh, place. And from this centralized place, you can also um, send kind of uh, alerts, like, I don't know, if uh, uh, my scheduling doesn't work, or if uh, somebody changes something on machine, and uh, I cannot pull it, like, from Git. So, Sounds also reliable, more or less. At least, uh, if something is broken, you will get this notification, and most likely somebody will fix it. Um, yeah. So as I said, um, what we got from this uh, like very simple hack and uh, nothing like really huge configuration is totally out of the scope of your bigger one. Maybe in terms of. Um, Code duplication, if you have something that's like very common between your Windows machine and Unix one, maybe you need to find something like in between, or you need to actually integrate into this Puppet Master. But seriously, like between Windows machine and Unix machine, do you have like so much in common? We didn't have so much, so we just like hosted it like separately. Uh, you will say, yeah, but if you use like apply, usually just like one file, and um, what can you store there? Um, but you can also provide uh, pass when your models are stored, and there you can build like any kind of builds, like big things, and even maybe reuse something from a, um, from a bigger like Unix browser somewhere there. So it's totally good. Um, it's also somewhere hosted that people can see like different versions, and yeah. uh, after blame if somebody like you did it, you fix it, and. <laughs> And then of the day, it's also error handling is fine. So what we did also, uh, we put like a huge screen just like next to our, I don't know, uh, developer team or like cross-functional teams. And if something's broken, they're like, what's happening here? Oops, somebody did something wrong there. Because with emails, it's not always like a perfect one because like if you're receiving like 10K emails or like even like 500 emails, like one more email, it doesn't matter. Something's good there or not so good. So <laughs> people tend to just like skip those emails, but if you show in something just in front of them, they're like, hmm, something is wrong there, and people um, tend to ask some other questions. Um, so, yeah, we covered one part, so now we can store some configuration, but why do you need configuration in the first place for this Windows machine? Because basically, when you usually start, you're like, okay, let's set up some things, let's install some software, and after this step, you will not need like any kind of um, big puppet support because, I mean, it's, we still are talking about this like small Windows guy, so it's not like 10K of those machines, it's most likely like one, two, or a couple of them, so maybe uh, it doesn't make sense to invest so much time to actually get it. But turns out, if you have um, 
some kind of BI related processes like business intelligence, you need to refresh some data, you need to get some ATL stuff. Um, you need to manage those things. And if you will go to Unix, it's fine. You can get cron, you can get like lots of products from uh, Hadoop Work that will try to um, keep this scheduling like consistent for you. And it's easy, it's everything pretty, it's everything fine. But if you will go to Windows World, it's like, what's happening there? Like, nobody cannot support like anything like properly, as, especially like in comparison with Linux one. So this one was actually uh, the bigger um, point when we actually needed those things. And uh, from my side, I, like I started with just creating something with uh, uh, Windows Scheduler and uh, go to console, create a new one, and everything else. And after some people were coming, like, but can you reschedule this uh, ATL job, like? early because I want to receive email like nine in the morning or so. And you're like, yeah, I can do it. But turns out that with this smart Tableau guy, um, not always you can uh, run like way too many um, uh, the same processes like in the same time. So you need to take care that some guys are gonna be like one after another and like everything else. So you need to think about scheduling. How can you do it? You can go to Windows Scheduler and see like, okay, there's something scheduled, there's something not, and everything else. Um, but if you want to add something, if you want to manage those like easier, it's quite complicated. So um, that's when uh, Puppet is getting like very powerful for you, because at the end of the day, just like a simple uh, configuration in, on your GitHub, so everybody can just like go there and see it. Even more, uh, they can send you a pull request, and new ATL stuff is already there. Quite simple, quite uh, powerful for us, and. Uh, going to be executed like every 15 minutes. Uh, so as you see, there's like a triggers. You can say um, execute it daily, starting at some time. You can execute it like weekly or some other things. Uh, but you remember that we wanted to sync it like every 15 minutes? Turns out that they do not support those things. And uh, I think I was writing some issues on GitHub to um, original scheduler Ruby project, and uh, they were like, nothing to do here. You can try to implement it after we can try to merge, and after Puppet guys gonna map those uh, functionality into Puppet model and everything else, so quite long way. Um, yeah, there was like this comment, you cannot use it because it doesn't work like this way. Um, so what we tried, uh, we created uh, even more hacker solutions. But I mean, we're still talking about Windows, so even if it's going to be beautiful, the guy's still going to crash some moment. <laughs> so it will not help you like 100%. <laughs> um, so it's like as simple as it is. And this also provides you some kind of overview why uh, Puppet is powerful. Because you can just like say, just execute this command and I'm fine with that. So um, as you can see from this, uh, uh, not very nice slide with lots of uh, words on it, <laughs> that it's trying to um, use the default uh, Windows CMD to create this task and execute it like every 15 minutes with job name and uh, your puppet uh, batch file. So it should be fine. With this moment we also covered. Um, for this moment it was like pretty fine. We, I think we stopped uh, um, changing this puppet for some, some weeks. And um, after we uh, found that uh, actually it works for some short time, but if you have seen this like big guy, it's like, I don't know, um, at least uh, uh, like 10 lines for every, every small things. And if you have like even like 20 jobs, it's already like a huge one. And after you see that like 40, 60, 70% of this code is just like the same one. So um, not much, uh, you're repeating yourself like so often that you don't want to use it. Um, so there was like a next iteration on this code and we were trying to get it uh, like in a better shape because basically it's just like scheduled task. Maybe you can make it somehow better. So we defined uh, um, just a general class of uh, job scheduler. Um, we defined some default like uh, scheduler params that are uh, gonna be like a very default ones. And um, for this case, you can see some kind of like templating. Um, that uh, even some kind of inheritance, uh, if you'll call it like this way. So um, after you need to sit together with uh, your maybe product or your data people and see like what kind of distribution of jobs you have, most likely you will see it like even in this uh, um, 
main uh, node definition file because they are all just more or less reading like each other. Um, yeah, and if you define this class job scheduler, like the next next step is going to be to define those uh, default parameters for this scheduler. Um, so in this case, in this case, uh, it's instance of uh, class that we had before as a definition. Uh, maybe it's not the most beautiful way, and like lots of people saying, like it could be even easier, like and you can generate it like on fly and everything else. Um, but that what we found like quite um, small in terms of definition, quite powerful in terms of uh, parameters, and uh, we were like more or less happy with those things. So um, next example is just like you need another one, and it's, that's all you already have it. So um, using this way, our big uh, definition of node uh, from uh, I don't know a couple hundreds of lines became like very small one because. Uh, you already understand what kind of uh, uh, jobs definition you already have. You already know what kind of parameters you already have. And the uh, next line is going to look like very small. So you're saying, OK, this one is default like double job, like for our case. We're saying that like there's name, the same name going to be used for uh, Windows scheduler. So if you, you're going to open this like Windows, <laughs> window on Windows, you can also see uh, the same name. So it's like understandable for you. Um, and the same stuff basically works for weekly updates. Uh, you can provide it as like weekly one. This weekly definition, I think, uh, is defined uh, within the standard uh, um, uh, standard job that we uh, defined before, like a couple of slides. And uh, basically, you can say that you're gonna run it like on Monday and everything else. Uh, the one big problem that I have seen from uh, not only from this approach, but like in general with scheduling, is um, a general philosophy maybe of Puppet, because um, uh, you do care about things that are going to be created like at this moment, but you don't care what happened before. So let's say um, I have this big configuration file. Fine. Uh, I say like, okay, some of ATL jobs I don't need anymore, so I want to just remove them. But it's like natural behavior for people like for this question. Just go to this configuration and remove this line. Enough, <laughs> mm -mm. because this guy has already created. So you need to actually um, be sure that this file, uh, not file, but uh, schedule, going to be removed like after you. So um, that's why I was asking this question about uh, um, cloud formation, and uh, also there are uh, lots of discussion about uh, uh, completely different direction. Maybe it's not. Uh, the things that I should mention during the puppet camp, but in general, uh, of immutable infrastructure, when all those things are just uh, um, pretty much immutable and uh, you do not have to change it. Even if you use some, uh, let's say, puppet for provisioning it, you do it like only once, and you sure that there is nothing is that happening like because of state of this machine, because he executed this puppet beforehand and he created some job like beforehand. So we haven't found like a big solution yet here. I mean, you can try to go like a hacky way and just remove like all your schedules beforehand and after like reschedule everything. But hopefully there should be like a better way to do it uh, like properly or like more better way. Uh, yeah, there's like another example uh, that uh, for our uh, business intelligence, we also use some of Redshift jobs. And uh, if you need like new ones, it's easy. You just like define um, extended version of jobs with some default parameters. And here you provide like only parameters that you actually use for those jobs. It was like five of them that uh, just like very common and um, everybody have them. Um, yeah, so from this part, you can see that uh, Puppet is not like only things that uh, you can use for Linux and uh, all this um, production ready stack, but even like with some smaller things that uh, usually people do not simply like beforehand, like business intelligence or like data teams, it sounds like something like very uh, side project, but even with small uh, tips and tricks, you can get it running and it's going to save you much time, uh, especially with those like scheduling things, like for me, saving like pretty much time. Uh, so another part of uh, uh, this talk is going to be about ranking. Um, 
I think uh, this part is was actually uh, before uh, like a first part because uh, I started to work with those ranking things like I don't know 2012 2013 and uh, this idea is coming from there and this setup of business intelligence it was just recently so it's kind of inverted like in those slides. Um, yeah, so what is ranking? Anybody knows what is ranking? No? Okay. So if you will say it like as simple as possible, it's just like kind of relation. So a relationship between different items. So even if you have like a five items in just some random order, it's already ranking. Maybe it's like a random one, like not very optimal for you, but it's totally fine. Um, like the biggest example of such ranking things, you can Think of Google, let's say. So you're trying to type something and you get some, like the most relevant thing. Um, relevancy in terms of that is gonna be uh, kind of like functions that's gonna, like in a very simple word, gonna say how useful our things are for user or like how, um, how happy is user gonna be if you're gonna show the things like on top or something else. Some people are gonna say that maybe it's not about happiness of users, but more about like cash that they're gonna generate. But I mean, we are all uh, trying to help people, right? Uh, so what are like specific of those rankings and why it's like important to, uh, to provide it like for um, as a requirement set for uh, our configuration. Uh, so first of all, especially uh, speaking of fashion uh, and um, e-commerce, uh, there's like lots of uh, seasonal influence. So, I don't know, something is uh, Fashion Berlin Week or Berlin Fashion Week or like London Week or whatever, and uh, some things are getting like more trendy and like actually seasonal or summer is coming and you cannot uh, uh, sell anymore some warm jackets or whatever. But if you're speaking of 12 countries, sometimes it's even like, what is like weather outside? It's like plus 20 degree. Most likely we're gonna sell something like very warm, it's fine. But what about uh, uh, something that is like in different hemisphere? So it's also it's like seasonal thing. Uh, from another side, it's also like you need to start new countries, so it's cold start, so you need to think how to uh, make it. And uh, you mentioned that some of rankings are um, aiming for different purposes, so basically uh, you need to build them like differently. But what it does to do like this puppet, like why I'm talking about all the things? Um, good question. <laughs> so basically, Based on that, we are going to have requirements, and requirements at the end of the day, what all um, DevOps people care about. Because if you have some AC criteria from your product owner, or like some people who are like in charge of you, and um, you need to build those things like based on those requirements. So what we had as kind of requirements for our project, we wanted to decrease our time to implement a new ranking. Uh, second is like the most uh, powerful for this. <laughs> kind of workshop. We wanted to keep our infrastructure uh, working and actually alive. So if I'm deploying some things because I want to do some new ranking test, everything else should be running there. Um, does anybody know what is A-B test? No, right? So um, idea from, uh, um, I don't know, from development or like from statistics as well, it's like very uh, different fields like to approach those things. So um, let's say you're building a ranking or you're deploying like a new infrastructure, right? Like the closer example. And how do you know that uh, those uh, like new infrastructure or like new uh, way to set up, uh, I don't know, to <laughs> configure your like JBoss and everything else um, is good. You can like try to compare those things. So what you usually do, you have some kind of like load balancer, you wanna split this traffic like for different segments and after you're gonna see how does it perform. So it's very basic explanation of this uh, A-B testing. Usually you can have also like AA testing to see that uh, um, those nodes are like more or less similar and it's like everything running as you expected and uh, B means that uh, something's totally different. Uh, like on top of it, uh, you're gonna have some uh, statistics to understand that it's happening uh, just because of noise or actually something's like significant happening there. Um, yeah, and performance level. You obviously wanna have it like still fast and uh, uh, understand what's actually happening there. So speaking of simple, uh, like very common infrastructure. 
so let's say uh, we have some very old JBoss or something more hipsterish. Um, usually, uh, you can embed this uh, solar in application, or you can have some kind of like solar um, cluster. Uh, in this example, you have this uh, big cluster there, and uh, within application, you have some. Uh, I don't know, not within application, but within this like node when deploy this application, uh, you have some load balancer and uh, or yeah, whatever. Just think about load balancer. Um, usually, you have those uh, queries uh, that come in from uh, your web application, and after they receive data from Nginx. So basically, if you uh, trying to deploy like a new ranking for this uh, JBoss guy, it's going to be automatically changing like everything like around and especially like if you're trying to change something like on solar side and you have like a big cluster, it's uh, quite easy to keep it uh, in case of something like alive and also to be sure that uh, you can run like a bit test because um, does anybody know uh, something about Apache Solar and in general about search? Solar? Oh, some people from Solar. Uh, and uh, yeah, so basically uh, Solar is like very simple, uh, could be in memory search engine when you can uh, use uh, general um, text search, let's say based on TFIDF, general fre frequency, inverse document frequency. And uh, what you can also use it for is kind of like container for re ranking your um, products like within this container. So uh, how we can help you with uh, Puppet or how we can uh, embed the things uh, um, based on our uh, big solar cluster. Uh, so in our example, um, we wanted to um, make this uh, uh, cluster independent from, uh, um, or new node independent of cluster, so we deployed it like totally separately. It's not, uh, uh, we're using the same code base, uh, but still have it. But the question, if you have those uh, uh, web application guys or like JBoss guys in our case, uh, how you can split the traffic like automatically? Let's say you wanna check traffic like only from some of uh, brands or so, or on something like very specific, like, um, I don't know, uh, uh, example from uh, Facebook gonna be like, uh, like the newest feature, uh, gonna be first of all, check like internal network. So all people like from office, like checking like everything that we deploy like on daily base, and there is everybody else do it like differently. Uh, yeah, there's like a, one slide about solar and like general about ranking. Uh, what you can know or can see like from this slide is that uh, um, here is like query, let's say, and uh, you can say that you're searching from a brand Adidas or just like general. You can do it just like fuzzy without like actually uh, specifying all those things. But in general, you can have some it's like static ones or you can have like dynamic. Dynamic means that you can change the context of your search or uh, focus priorities of the things like on fly. So you can just rewrite the URL and uh, uh, in our case, this guy from uh, like, I don't know, with some boosting function based on popularity and clicks, like a very common example, uh, could be defined like just in URL. So what does it mean for you? Uh, so if you have this guy here, you can define that some of queries uh, gonna be like on fly, um, change it to like totally different ranking. Um, that means that data that you have is still like the same, uh, all the structure is still the same, um, but you can change it somehow. Um, but the point here is that you need to generate those things like somehow. So um, even if you know that the, some of your URLs uh, should be changed, but uh, you need to understand how to change them and how to rewrite those things. Um, and obviously for that we use Puppet. <laughs> so um, let's say, I think pass here is like totally wrong, so I changed it like from another slide, but not too t totally. So let's say it's like not definition. Uh, you can include some Nginx, you can say is that config is, um, I don't know, some kind of config. Uh, we also define some ranking model. And uh, after we are saying that like for some of those URLs, we wanna split this traffic to something <laughs> totally different. So, um, I don't know, uh, use uh, like weather correlation for your, um, for your ranking. So let's say if uh, you know that uh, forecast is saying like in real time in two hours gonna be rain, show some umbrellas like on top or so. Uh, obviously you're not gonna use it like for all kind of traffic uh, because you never tried it. Maybe it's like, like bad idea and uh, you're gonna spend like all your money and uh, all your bosses gonna be angry on you. So, um, 
you want to check it like for some of URLs. Uh, you can define those URLs in this uh, um, URLs array, basically. And what you do afterwards, uh, you understand how you um, build this ranking model. So I showed it here. You can uh, define this uh, uh, function, how you define this ranking like in URL. And what you do afterwards, many different things that you cannot understand <laughs> here. Uh, I will try to explain like as much as possible. Um, so you are saying that uh, like base URLs that come in should be rewritten like in different uh, uh, form. Those rewrites are going to be used for Nginx, and this Nginx guy is going to say like, okay, this one is uh, URL that we're going to test for, um, I don't know, weather feature or features that your data team is going to use for something like fancy, but they are uh, quite afraid of using it like for something for all the traffic. And basically, it doesn't make sense to use for all the traffic. Um, yeah, so uh, you can rewrite it. You can, uh, it's like using those uh, different uh, configuration of uh, Nginx, you can say that, I don't know, uh, for mobile traffic, you, you're going to use something totally different. For people coming from, uh, I don't know, from London to show something different because today's like puppet camp here or something else. <coughs> so it's quite flexible. But what, what we were aiming for, uh, we wanted to have it uh, um, lean and actually flexible. Um, um, in terms of lean, that means that uh, if you can fail somewhere, it's better to fail like as fast as possible because it's going to be cheaper to fail for you. Uh, in terms of uh, developers, engineers, and everybody else, it means that uh, your feedback cycle is getting like very short. So if you can fail just right now, better fail right now than like deploy it like for six hours and after you that your syntax error or, or something else. So um, how does it help in terms of ranking and in terms of puppet? So first, like very data approach or whatever, uh, you just like build some kind of statistical model. You see like what kind of parameters you have there, and um, you already have feedback like in terms of I don't know half an hour, like 20 minutes, like one hour, depending like on complexity of your model. Um, after you can say that uh, you want to test it for just employees. So, um, I don't know, some ranking uh, things or even not ranking, just like everything that you want to test. You can define uh, in this uh, uh, private configuration what kind of uh, uh, rule set you have, what kind of user you're going to focus, and it's fine. Um, after you can uh, define it like for some of pages, let's say, uh, some pages of the traffic you can uh, uh, send for some new things, or um, maybe it's like more common to test for them. Uh, for bigger scale, you can do uh, A-B testing rollout. So basically, uh, you're defining um, like already, like all steps before, they're like fine, you are totally happy with that. And uh, on this step, you're going to say like some percentage of servers or some percentage of traffic, I'm going to check it out. So um, it's also fine because um, it's easy for you because your infrastructure is still like staying. Oh, I can't click. I'm bad with clicking. Never happened to me before, but can I say? No? Sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, so at the end of the day, you're helping your uh, data teams, you're keeping your uh, reliability still up because all your servers are running um, and everybody more or less should be happy with um, this approach. Yeah, this one. So it's more or less all from my side. Sorry for uh, being so fast in terms of uh, uh, feeding you like lots of uh, strange things and uh, uh, maybe you will never use them, but if you have any kind of uh, um, data infrastructure or business intelligence or general uh, how can I use Puppet for this like data things, uh, you can just like approach me and uh, I'm happy to answer any kind of questions. Any questions? Come on, so many yeah, words. Just ask something about some random ones. <laughs> <laughs>
sorry if uh, I missed the information in the beginning, but uh, have you tried uh, setting Puppet Agent over a SIGWIN or something like that? Instead of... Uh, I think I've tried, um, but somehow it didn't work out for me. And also, like, if you have... Uh, even more chains or like pipelines in between, somebody will definitely fail like on every step of those things. So I was I was just trying to keep it like as uh, few things like in between as possible. And uh, after I was obviously trying to keep it like working. So if it works like on Windows and you cover like all your use cases, I'm fine with that because maybe there's some features that not uh, uh, totally implemented or like behave somehow differently. I would better skip this part. Thank you. Thank you. Well, anything else? Yes, another one. Can you not have scheduled jobs delete all the not owned by you scheduled jobs? I, mean, I get Windows is hard, and I get that you've done the minimum to get your job done. Where do you go to get all the magic that you want again? Um. So if I correctly understood this uh, question with jobs, so the biggest pain that we still have are the jobs that we can remove from configuration, but they're still in there. As I said, there is like happy solution just to try to uh, clean all of them and after like recreate, fine, sh should be fine. But sometimes I also want to check those like statuses because in Windows scheduler they're showing like that was like error number one, something happened there. Okay, <laughs> so at least I know that something happened there. Um, yeah, it's another idea is try to make it like immutable infrastructure. So you say, um, I don't know, the, the most aggressive one, you have like cloud formation, it's gonna just like roll out like every time, and after you like run it on top of it. So uh, from this case, you will know that like there is no state, because even like this, uh, AWS nodes, they, kind of, they were created just like five seconds ago, so nothing is going to be happening there. So it just depends uh, how much pain you have, what kind of pain you have, and how you're going to fix it. So it's like up to you. Oh, Thank you so there's much. There's another one. Okay. No? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry, so that's so high. <laughs> Hi. Um, do you not find any limitation when running standalone mode for reporting purposes or analytical stuff? Um, so far, we didn't face any like big limitations. But if you have like any kind of one in mind, we can just like talk uh, afterwards, and uh, maybe we will find out some solution for you. Cool. Thank you very much. Sorry for so many data things. I was trying. <laughs>